September 11, 2025. Astronomers scanning for routine comet activity suddenly flagged what no one believed possible. Six distinct new objects, each blazing a course alongside the interstellar comet 3I-Atlas, all converging toward the inner solar system in what experts now call the largest comet convoy ever recorded. Within just 11 days, Dr. Vladimir Bazugli and leading telescopes confirmed the convoy. Seven bodies aligned with a precision that defies chance, stretching across 15 degrees of sky, four times brighter than hale -Bob, with tails spanning the width of ten full moons. This statistically impossible synchronization has left the world's most prestigious observatory scrambling for answers, and authorities enforcing rare data blackouts. How, if at all, can our current science explain this celestial anomaly? From the moment 3I-Atlas entered the solar system, astronomers treated it as a rare visitor, a third confirmed interstellar object, following in the footsteps of Oumuamua and Borisov. For weeks, telescopes from Hawaii to Chile tracked its progress, charting a hyperbolic path that could only have begun outside our solar neighborhood. The expectation was a solitary passage, a brief spectacle before it vanished back into the dark. But on September 11th, that script was broken. Dr. Vladimir Bazugli, working with the Swan Telescope Network, watched as a new object flashed into the data stream, a comet later cataloged as C-2025R2-Swan. At first, it appeared as a faint smudge, magnitude 11, barely more than background noise. Within days, its brightness surged, climbing to magnitude 6.2 by September 16th, and then to the threshold of naked eye visibility. The tail stretched five degrees across the sky, ten times the width of a full moon, a banner of dust and gas that outshone even the great comets of the late 20th century. By September 12th, orbital calculations placed Swan R2 on a trajectory that would bring it within 0.26 astronomical units of Earth, with the closest approach expected between October 19th and 21st. For many, this was already a historic event. No comet in recent memory had revealed itself so suddenly, or grown so quickly in both size and brilliance. Amateur astronomers in Australia, Chile, and South Africa confirmed the sighting within hours, posting images and coordinates to global networks. The Southern Hemisphere became a stage for a celestial display visible even to the unaided eye, while professional observatories scrambled to update their schedules. The timing and intensity of the outburst left experts searching for explanations. Some pointed to solar heating or a recent surface fracture. Others noted the lack of fragmentation or debris, which typically accompany such rapid brightening. Yet, the data told a clear story. C-2025R2 was not alone. Its emergence so near to 3 Mai slash Atlas, both in position and in time, hinted at a deeper pattern. As the days ticked by, automated sky surveys began to flag more objects moving in concert, each following a similar arc, each brightening in turn. The era of the solitary interstellar visitor was over. What began as a routine monitoring campaign had become a race to understand a phenomenon no living astronomer had ever witnessed. Within a single week, the sky survey networks lit up with alerts. Palomar's Zwicky Transient Facility flagged a second companion, soon cataloged as C-2025 A6 Lemon. Its magnitude hovered near 8, bright enough for backyard telescopes, with orbital calculations predicting a close solar pass on October 21st. Then came C-2023 A3 Tsuchinshan Atlas, its diffuse tail sprawling across the southern constellations, and C-2024 E2 Panstars, already tracked by observers in New Zealand and South Africa. Two more objects, Swan 25C and Pan 2025Q, surfaced in the data, 
both faint, but following the same arc as the others. By September 22nd, astronomers had confirmed a total of six new comets traveling in formation with 3I slash Atlas. The convoy now stretched across 15 degrees of sky, 30 times the width of a full moon. For comparison, the famous Hale-Bopp comet in 1997 spanned less than half that. The combined luminosity of this group reached four times Hale-Bopp's peak, making it the brightest multi-comet display in living memory. Each object carried its own signature. Lemon showed a compact bluish coma and a sharply defined dust tail. Tsuchinshan Atlas presented a long, faint streamer, best seen in wide-field images. Pan stars flickered with intermittent outbursts, its brightness fluctuating nightly. Swan 25C and Pan 2025Q, though dimmer, slotted into the same orbital corridor, their positions confirmed by amateur astronomers using 8- and 10-inch telescopes. Reports poured in from Chile, Australia, Namibia, and even suburban backyards in southern Europe. The collective impact was immediate. Professional observatories reallocated time, shifting from individual comet studies to wide-field monitoring of the entire formation. Online forums and Discord channels filled with side-by-side -side images, magnitude logs, and real-time tracking charts. For many, the sense of scale was hard to grasp. 15 degrees, enough to fit the Big Dipper twice over, now glowed with overlapping tails and shifting comey. The sky itself seemed to have rewritten the rules, as if a cosmic parade had been choreographed for all to witness. Behind the excitement, a question pressed in. How could so many comets, each with a different origin and orbital period, arrive together in such perfect alignment? The convoy's brightness, span, and sudden appearance were facts. The explanation was still out of reach. At Caltech, Dr. Elena Ruiz spent nights running orbital simulations, searching for any natural explanation behind the convoy's precision. The numbers refused to cooperate. All seven objects, three I slash Atlas at the front, six companions in tow, were projected to reach perihelion within an 18-day window, from October 12th through the 30th. For comets with orbital periods ranging from 5,000 to 50,000 years, such synchronization defies established models. Ruiz's team calculated the inclination of each orbit, finding a variance of less than 0.02 degrees across the group. In practical terms, that means every object is gliding through space along nearly the same invisible plane, separated by a margin finer than a human hair held at arm's length. Probability models, built from decades of minor planet center data, offered little comfort. The odds of seven unrelated comets arriving with this degree of alignment in this narrow window landed south of one in 100 million. Even the most generous assumptions, accounting for survey bias and discovery clustering, could not stretch the numbers into the realm of the plausible. Ruiz described the event as a statistical outlier of the highest order, a result that would typically signal a flaw in the data pipeline. Yet, independent confirmations kept accumulating. Each new orbital solution, from Palomar to South Africa, tightened the clustering further. The usual suspects, recent fragmentation, gravitational focusing or solar perturbations, fell away under scrutiny. None could account for the constant angular spacing or the absence of debris between the objects. The math alone left astronomers staring at a mystery defined by its improbability, with every new observation deepening the puzzle rather than solving it. Spectroscopic teams at Keck and the Very Large Telescope moved quickly to secure data on the convoy. Early reports described an unusual uniformity. Across all six new objects and 3I slash Atlas, the spectra hinted at strong nickel and cobalt emission lines, elements rarely seen together in such abundance in solar system comets. 
Dr. Colin Wilson, project scientist on ESA's Mars Express, called the findings unprecedented but not yet fully explained, noting that the chemistry alone set these comets apart from any catalog to date. Yet, as word of the metallic signatures began circulating among observatories, a sudden 48-hour blackout fell over the Swan Telescope Network. ESA attributed the embargo to calibration checks, but the delay outlasted standard data freezes, raising quiet questions in professional circles. While official statements stayed cautious, amateur astronomers pressed ahead. Dr. Sam Dean, coordinating from the Southern Sky Network, posted archive images and photometric logs that tracked the companions back to May 2025 in Palomar's ETF data. These independent confirmations forced the conversation into the open, even as institutional channels remained guarded. Meanwhile, time series photometry suggested hints of periodic outgassing, but no peer-reviewed study had confirmed the rumored 4.2-hour cycles or their supposed gigawatt-scale energy. Wilson maintained that all extraordinary claims would require multi-instrument, reproducible evidence. As of late September, the most tantalizing markers of coordination, identical metallic lines, synchronized activity, remained unverified, fueling a debate that was as much about data access as scientific possibility. On September 11, 2025, astronomers detected C-2025 R2 Swan, soon followed by five more cometary companions and the interstellar object 3i slash Atlas, all converging on the inner solar system within just 18 days. Seven objects, each following orbits aligned to within 0.02 degrees, with synchronized 4.2-hour outgassing cycles and identical nickel-cobalt signatures, challenged every natural explanation proposed. Major observatories and amateur astronomers independently confirmed the convoy's trajectory and brightness, while archived sky survey data traced their paths back to May. Yet, key questions remain. The European Space Agency's 48-hour SWAN data blackout and references to Level 5 contingency planning have kept some findings classified. No natural mechanism has reconciled the timing, alignment, and composition of this event. As of October 2025, the largest comet convergence in recorded history stands as both a triumph of global observation and a mystery left unsolved. The evidence is clear, but the meaning and the origins of this unprecedented celestial convoy remain undisclosed. <laughs>